on the shores of the God's Eye, due north of the Isle of Faces, rises a monument to arrogance and cruelty. Harrenhal. For a people who prided themselves on their ships, the Iron Men of old seized any chance to leave them, and carved out a vast kingdom from the peaceful river lords. Their empire reached its zenith under King Heron Hora, called the Black by those he terrorized, and by his own men, though they meant it proudly. King Heron enslaved the Riverlands to raise the mightiest fortress Westeros had ever seen. A castle that could garrison a million men, with walls so vast that winters would come and go, and besieging armies grow old and grey before the castle fell. Five towers he ordered, reaching into the heavens like grasping fingers. A monstrosity which he forced our people to build for their own subjugation. But the very day the slaves laid the last stone, Aegon Targaryen and his sisters arrived in the south. When they arrived with their small army, Heron laughed and shut the gates. Heron Hall would have its first test, and an easy one at that. It failed. Heron Hall could have withstood an assault from all the armies in Westeros combined. But Heron learned that the tallest and thickest walls meant little to dragons, for dragons fly. With Heron and his sons dead, Heron Hall quickly surrendered to Aegon. House Tully then raised the River Lords in rebellion against the Iron Islands, and with Aegon, we flushed the Iron Men to the sea. We should have torn down the castle stone by stone then, but Heron Hall seemed such a magnificent prize that Aegon gave it to one of his commanders whose line then withered to extinction, as would every family to hold it thereafter. When many speak of Harrenhal, their voices drop to whispers about Mad Lady Lothson, who was said to send a giant bat to collect children for her crockpots, and to bathe in blood and serve feasts of human flesh about the ghosts of Black Heron and his sons who still walk the castle at night all aflame, of the servants who went to bed in full health and were found in the morning burnt to ash. Mere stories to frighten wayward children and excite young girls, you may say. You would not be entirely wrong. Heron Hall is a prize, a nigh impregnable castle with enough land and enough income to make a man at a stroke one of the greatest lords in Westeros. But you would not be entirely right either. Say by a king's grace, Harrenhal became yours. Now you must garrison it. You must repair it and maintain it. Even stretched to the ends of your means, you cannot fill and manage the whole castle. So you retreat your household to four of the five towers, then three, then two, then only the bottom thirds of those. You close the hall of a hundred hearths and take your meals in your rooms. Even then you can't shake the feeling of desolation, that Harrenhal and its vastness is devouring you. In later years, as you bury a grandson or a great-grandson, the last of your line, you will know it has. <laughs>